Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. Today's topic is various diseases of periapical tissues. It is a very commonly asked question uh, in oral pathology, oral medicine, uh, oral surgery and endodontics. Irrespective of the subject, it is a very commonly asked uh, short notes or short essay. So it could be a long essay, diseases of periapical tissues. They are periapical abscess, periapical granuloma, radical assist, phoenix abscess and condensing osteitis. Condensing osteitis is commonly asked in oral medicine and radiology. This is asked in uh, endodontics and these are asked in oral pathology or even oral surgery or in oral medicine and radiology. So let's learn about the various diseases of periapical tissues. So the basic pattern of uh, the origin of periapical tissue, the caries which starts from enamel, dentine and pulp, it reaches to the periapical area through the apical foramen. So the tooth will be grossly decayed mo in most of the cases or the caries will not be very wide but it will be a deeper lesion. So the first one in periapical tissue diseases we have periapical abscess okay periapical abscess which is also known as dento alveolar abscess or alveolar abscess which is uh, acute or chronic separative process of dental periapical region okay a acute or a chronic separative process because there will be pus formation or pus collection at the apical region and it usually arises as a result of infection so the abscess which develop directly as an acute apical periodontitis following an acute pulpitis so pulpitis is the infection of pulp and periodontitis is infection of periodontium so this could be uh, developed directly as an acute apical periodontitis after pulpitis so after pulpitis it leads to periodontitis okay after pulpitis pulpitis it leads to periodontitis but more commonly it originates in an area of chronic infection so the clinical features are it present uh, as an acute inflammation of the apical periodontium, tooth will be extremely painful and it would be slightly extruded from its socket because the socket and the tooth, okay, so tooth, there will be infection and there will be abscess. So this creation of abscess will push the tooth little towards the incisal region okay towards the crown region so a little away from the bone because of the collection of abscess here so that is why it is little extruded normal position will be here the new position will be here because there will be little extrusion from its socket due to the collection of abscess and there will be chronic uh, these ab abscess which generally present uh, with no clinical features that is chronic lesions will, will not be will not create any much uh, symptoms and there will be mild circumscribed area of separation that shows little tendency to spread from local area so there will be a circumscribed area of pus that shows little tendency to spread in radiographic features uh, except for slight thickening of periodontal membrane there will not be any radiographic evidence of its presence okay so chronic abscess uh, which is developing in a periapical granuloma we can see a radio lucent area at the apex so chronic abscess radio lucent will be black area at the developing uh, developing in a periapical granuloma so this will go to periapical granuloma so such cases there will be a radiolucent area at the apex 
in uh, histopathological feature this area of separation is composed of uh, chiefly uh, the disintegrating uh, leukocytes and there will be dilation of blood vessels and also there will be a serous exudate this uh, pus will contain serous exudate and the most common treatment is uh, drainage of the abscess then open the pulp chamber and do the root canal treatment or sometimes we need to extract the tooth so root canal treatment uh, will uh, give a better prognosis once uh, infection is completely removed there will be healing at the periapical area so if it is not uh, uh, treated uh, it might leads to uh, space infection like cellulitis osteomyelitis and um, there will be chances for fistula formation and bacteremia so all this could be happen the second one is periapical granuloma which is also known as apical periodontitis so it is one of the most common sequelae of pulpitis which is the most common sequelae of pulpitis and it is a localized mass of chronic granulation tissue so this will be seen in radiograph periapical abscess will not be seen so when this abscess uh, on a longer duration when it is in a chronic nature and it is yet it is changing to granuloma at that time this will be visible in radiograph so it is uh, due to again a response to infection the clinical features include uh, it is a, it is a first evidence uh, we get that the spread is beyond the confines of tooth pulp and may be noticeable uh, sensitivity of involved tooth to percussion so that is the most common thing tendron percussion or sensitivity and mild pain when biting or chewing on solid food and uh, in some cases tooth feels like elongated in its sockets because of this granuloma the granuloma it will be elongated or um, extruded and also uh, the, this sensitivity or this uh, top is it could be uh, due to the edema or inflammation of periodontal ligament and hyperemia in radiographic feature this is the earliest evidence of uh, periapical tissue and there will be thickening of uh, periodontal ligament at root apex there will be proliferation of granulation tissue and there will be some resorption of the bone resorption of bone and it appears as a radio loosened area of variable size it depends on the uh, chronic nature and it will be attached to the root apex if this is a root apex this will be attached to the root apex and some cases it will be well circumscribed it will be well circumscribed the borders will be very clear and it uh, does not pass through an acute phase it is mostly a chronic nature there will not be any acute uh, phase granuloma formation takes a lot of time so this will be a chronic uh, nature and in histologic feature we uh, we know that it is starting as a hyperemia or edema of periodontal ligament with infiltration of all those inflammatory cells mainly lymphocytes and plasma cells and there will be increased vascularity at the particular site there will be increased vascularity and it also induce resorption of the supporting bone so there will be pro a proliferation of fibroblast and formation of more tiny vascular channels and there will be numerous delicate connective tissue fibrils and the treatment uh, it's uh, mostly extraction uh, sometimes uh, we can go for root canal therapy with uh, subsequent uh, episectomy so episectomy also indicated after root canal therapy 
so periapical granuloma if it is not treated it may undergo transformation into periapical cyst so radicular cyst we have already discussed in detail anyway let's uh, look into the the main points which is also known as apical periodontal cyst periapical cyst or root end cyst which is the most common cyst of uh, tooth origin and there will be uh, it could be due to bacterial infection necrosis of dental pulp uh, and this involvement of caries tooth so there will be proliferation of epithelial rest in the periapical area involved by granuloma and the epithelial proliferation follows an irregular pattern of growth the clinical features include it is commonly asymptomatic this is asymptomatic these two are symptomatic whereas the radicular cyst is asymptomatic which present no clinical evidence of their presence S uh, seldom painful or even sensitive to percussion so it represent chronic inflammatory process which develops only over a very longer period of time so cyst formation this will be like cyst okay so this is a granuloma this will be cyst with fluid cavity inside so it develops over a very longer period of time so this uh, coagulase enzyme which promotes virulence by inhibiting phagocytosis so clinical features are when palpated clinically there will be superficial abscess which is uh, fluctuant in nature and the tooth is definitely will be caries and sometimes mobile and symptoms of acute inflammation uh, swelling and fever will be there so the treatment uh, commonly involves the enterodontic therapy or the RCT should be repeated with uh, much better uh, debridement sometimes we need to go for tooth extraction and we should put on antibiotics antibiotics is important to control the spread of infection and the last one is condensing osteitis which is also known as chronic focal sclerosing osteomyelitis which is a very unusual reaction of bone which occurs in instances of uh, extremely high tissue resistance or in cases of very low grade infection so low grade infection low grade infection is the main cause of condensing osteitis which occurs in almost young persons before the age of 20 years old and commonly affected is mandibular first molar with large caries lesion so the mandibular first molar with large caries lesion is the most commonly affected tooth and the other features are which is associated with non vital teeth or teeth which is undergoing process of degeneration tooth will be definitely asymptomatic but some cases very rare cases pain or tenderness will be there on percussion and palpation radiographic feature there will be well circumscribed radio opaque mass of sclerotic bone surrounding okay so it will be a radio opaque not radio lucent radio opaque mass with a sclerotic bone surrounding which extend below the apex of one or more roots of this mandibular molar and in histologic features it has dense mass of bony trabeculae with little interstitial marrow tissue and there will be dense mass of uh, and there will be uh, inflammatory cells such as plasma cell lymphocytes so in treatment part we follow the same uh, regimen just like uh, how we were doing in all these periapical tissue problems that is endodontic treatment extraction so in treatment side we uh, follow the same regimen what we were following for all the periapical tissues uh, it is like root canal treatment 
or surgical removal of the tooth so that is uh, all about the five lesions or the five diseases of periapical tissues so it is in a ascending order we can say abscess leads to granuloma which leads to cyst so the radiographic appearance starts from here granuloma cyst and abscess phoenix abs abscess is a peculiar abscess which commonly seen after the root canal treatment due to the improper debridement so the post root canal treatment abscess is a phoenix abscess so it was not there but just the cause of the abscess is root canal treatment and condensing osteitis due to the low grade infection there will be a sclerotic bone or the radio opacity seen in only condensing osteitis rest these three are radio lucent area this is not visible in radiograph this is known as apical periodontitis dento alveolar abscess or alveolar abscess that is chronic focal sclerosing osteomyelitis so this is a very commonly asked five questions in many of the subjects endodontics oral surgery oral pathology oral medicine and radiology so i hope you understood the difference between these five and the treatment part is almost same for everything rct rrct episectomy or extraction and the duration is chronic nature from periapical granuloma onwards since this is very acute nature so i'll come up with a new topic in dentistry and more so hope you understood this concept of diseases of periapical tissues thank you